Hi everyone. In this video lecture, we will cover uh, a new, another physical agent, uh, which is hydrotherapy, uh, very much used in physiotherapy. Uh, before starting the, the, this subject, uh, I want to emphasize the importance of evidence-based practice in physiotherapy. So as you already know, EBP, evidence-based practice, is based uh, on the evidence available for this intervention, okay? It's also based on the clinical expertise of the physiotherapist. And last but not least, uh, the patient's preference, okay? So if an intervention uh, put the, the life of the patient at stake, so we have to be careful before uh, judging what, um, we, what interventions could be potentially uh, good, helpful, or not, okay? So hydrotherapy is considered a safe technique. Uh, it can be applied like to many uh, different conditions, including uh, in the neurology field, um, respiratory conditions, cardiovascular conditions, um, musculoskeletal conditions okay so there are like it's very wide the 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 fields of application of hydrotherapy as you see here uh there are many different types of hydrotherapy which which basically consists of uh, exercising in the water okay uh, here we see an example of aishi which is like a chinese technique mainly employed for um, relaxation and pain relief, okay? Uh, in this other picture here, we see um, a whirlpool, okay, which consists of a tank and a turbine that uh, agitates the water, okay? This water, uh, we can also uh, adjust the temperature. Uh, this is warm or cold water, depending on the goals of the treatment. Okay, and here at the top we see uh, uh, resisted exercises in the water. Here we have more types of hydrotherapy. Okay, we can use hydrotherapy, this a swimming pool, uh, to train gait. Okay, in, in patients. Uh, here, gaits using parallel bar. Okay, we can also train gait using a, an immersed treadmill, as you see here in this tank. This is more expensive than a, a regular, an ordinary swimming pool, but this is also an, a, an option, okay? Um, here you see another example of an immersed treadmill in a swimming pool, okay? And here, uh, cycling, uh, cycle ergometers in the swimming pool, which is uh, aqua, aqua cycling, okay? It's, uh, also used uh, in hydrotherapy. So hydrotherapy, uh, if we could classify this physical agent, hydrotherapy could be classified as a mechanical agent, okay? Um, I'll tell you why. So water has some physical properties. Uh, these physical properties include uh, specific heat and thermal conductivity, buoyancy, resistance, and hydrostatic pressure. So those three here, uh, buoyancy, resistance, and hydrostatic pressure, they can, they are mechanical uh, factors, okay, that uh, could affect the effects uh, of hydrotherapy in the human body. Whereas this first one here is more related to uh, temperature, okay? So this is a thermal aspect of hydrotherapy. So hydrotherapy can be both um, a, thermal, a thermal agent, okay, and also a mechanical agent. But as you see here, most of the properties, they are derived from mechanical uh, properties of the water, okay? And we'll go through each of them now. The first of them, specific heat and thermal conductivity, uh, this is related with uh, temperature, okay? So specific heat, is uh, the ability uh, to retain heat, okay? Uh, 
and thermal conductivity is the ability to transfer heat. So water can be used as a superficial heating or cooling agent, depending on the goals of the treatment. Uh, so we can also always adjust the temperature of the water. Um, water has a specific heat uh, that is four times more than that of the air. Okay, so as you see here in this table, we have specific heat, and here in this uh, other side, we have thermal conductivity of the water, of air, and also the water air ratio. So this table shows that uh, water can has the ability to retain heat four times more than the air. Okay, as you see here, and in this in the re related uh, and regarding the thermal conduct conductivity water has the ability to transfer uh, heat 25 times more than the air okay as you see here this ratio so this has a four times ratio and this approximately 25 times more okay so water is a good uh, uh, Tra can transfer very well the, the, the heat and also can retain heat, okay, more than air. Um, if we compare different types of hydrotherapy, uh, I showed you some examples of a swimming pool and also of a tank, which is called whirlpool, okay, that tank that agitates water. So, if we compare both of them, stationary water transfers heat by conduction. Okay, stationary water in a swimming pool, for example, with when the water is uh, stationary, uh, and moving water transfer heat by convection. Okay, so uh, moving water in the example of a whirlpool. Okay, in which is a tank that uh, has the water there is, has a turbine that agitates uh, the water. So those are two different physical properties that we can, um, we can have uh, this, uh, we can mark the difference between uh, a swimming pool and here in this case, a whirlpool. Buoyancy. Uh, buoyancy is that force that uh, we experience uh, as an upward thrust on the body in the opposite direction to the force of gravity. So buoyancy, this principle, is related with the Archimedes uh, principle. So when we are immersed uh, in a swimming pool, okay, our body uh, faces this, uh, this uh, force that goes in the upward direction, this means uh, uh, to the top, okay, which is opposite than the force of gravity, which goes down, okay. Uh, so the Archimedes principle says, when a body is entirely or partially immersed in fluid at rest, it experiences an upward thrust equal to the weight of the fluid it displaces, okay. This, um, this condition uh, can vary, obviously, according to, this depends, actually, this depends on the density of the body, okay, and also depends on the density of the water. So if you have a look in this second example, um, this, uh, this guy here is wearing a, an air uh, life ja jacket. So this, uh, life jacket uh, has air, okay? So air has lower density than the water. So this means that this guy, this into, uh, the body of this guy has lower density than the water. So uh, the ability to flow is higher. So he will flow easily. He will float, oh, sorry, he will float easily easily here okay so the ability to float uh, is better and in, in this third example we have um, an example of if we are swimming in the dead sea 
uh, in a water that contains like very high density of salt. Okay. Uh, in this case, if the density of the water is high, also higher than the body, okay, uh, so the body will float. So this is buoyancy, okay. So this this principle, uh, this uh, property of buoyancy depends on the density of the water and the density of the body, okay, immersed. Then we have resistance. Uh, resistance depends on the viscosity of the water also, okay, viscosity is basically uh, that property that causes uh, friction between uh, molecules in the water, okay. So the viscosity of water provides resistance to the motion of a body, okay. So when a body is fast moving uh, in the water, this results in high resistance. When the body moves slow, slowly in the water, this results in moderate or lower resistance, okay? So the resistance increases in proportion to the relative speed of motion and the frontal area of the body part immersed, okay? Uh, we could also infer from this picture that uh, someone uh, immersed uh, swimming using paddles, uh, it is also increases the frontal area uh, of the body. So movement associated with increased uh, frontal area, okay? This also increases resistance, okay? Uh, this is different than uh, if we compare someone um, swimming like on the surface of a swimming pool, okay? Uh, when uh, with the limbs straight in front, so the limb, with the limbs straight in front decrease uh, frontal area and decrease resistance, okay? So when the limbs are in parallel with the surface of the water, so this creates less resistance, okay? And finally, uh, this physical property is hydrostatic pressure. The hydrostatic, hydrostatic pressure is that pressure exerted by a fluid on an immersed body. So this pressure, this hydrostatic pressure um, is based on the Pascal law, okay, which says that a fluid exerts equal pressure on all surfaces of a body at rest at a given depth. And this pressure increases in proportion to the depth of the fluid. So someone who is immersed here in this swimming pool will experience uh, less hydrostatic pressure uh, near the surface of the water, okay? As you see here, the arrows, they are uh, thinner, okay? And as we increase the depth, okay, of immerse, immersion, uh, we have more uh, hydrostatic pressure uh, in, in, in his feet, for example, okay? So his legs, they experience more hydrostatic pressure than his arms in this case, okay? So the deeper we go, the more um, hydrost hydrostatic pressure uh, we'll have here uh, in the lower limbs, okay? So this is, those are the um, physical properties of water that uh, they are key to understand the effects that will be produced in the human bodies, okay? So I will see you in the next video.